so it's been really nice being in the soap shop again and to film and everything and testing out this really cool setup that we have going on here and you know getting it ready for all of the crazy things that we're going to continue doing with all of this and i've liked it a lot and i think you guys have liked it too so that's been fun and it's just you know awesome and that's all i just wanted to talk about how fun it is to be out here i mean that's literally not all we're doing an faq today we're gonna take a break from the nailed it stuff and answer some frequently asked cues. But you know, the intro is always my time. I mean, it's all always my time that I get to spend with you. But I will tell you more about what we are doing in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 308 of 365 days of soap, and today we are doing an FAQ, and we are going to actually center that around um, Aleppo soaps and the African soaps, because I do get a lot of questions about both of those, and specifically questions about tutorials, and so I think I think for the first bit of all of this, we should even talk about what that is, like what they are, what the benefit of these soaps are, where they originate from, etc, etc, etc. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the oils and the ingredients that go into both of these soaps because they are a little bit different than you would normally make a soap and, you know, all the things. And so let's get to the video and we can do that there. Okay, FAQ time. And first up is Aleppo soap. Where does it come from? Why do we care? All of the things. Well, the first reason why you should care is because it is actually the base of many, many soap recipes and soaps that we make today. French soap, uh, Castile soap, all, all the things. And so for that reason, it's cool. And it's been around for a very long time. It originated in Syria in Aleppo, the city, and it dates back for like eight centuries, so they say. And as I said, it became the base for many vegetable oil soaps. And so what is Aleppo first and foremost? Well, it's a combination of olive oil and sweet bay oil or laurel oil. And it is, you know, basically that. And the percentages that it comes in for, uh, you know, the, the soaps, as far as what percentage of olive and what percentage of, you know, laurel or bay you put in varies. But for the most part, it's primarily olive oil. And the process for making it the traditional way is also pretty interesting. Essentially what occurs is the lye solution is put into a vat of super hot olive oil and then it's cooked for like three days. And then they add the bay laurel oil or, you, you know, and at the final stage, and then they kind of pour it out on the floor and let it get firm. And then they cut it into blocks and then they season it and cure it for at least seven months. And in that process, it goes from green to a dark brown. And yeah, 
it's pretty cool. It's been said to have antiseptic properties, good moisture properties, good for shampoo bars and dandruff and all that jazz. Also read that it's good as a face mask. So you put it on your face, like you wash your face and you leave the lather on there to dry. And it's supposed to just do wonders for the skin. So I find that to be very interesting. Now, this is actually one that I would consider making just because it's, again, the base for the majority of our, you know, soap bars and not, you know, a huge deal. The biggest reason why I've never made it is because the Bay Laurel, the Sweet Bay, the Laurel Oil, it's expensive as crap. I just looked it up again and it ranges anywhere between like $35 and $70 a pound. And that's cuckoo bananas. But I, may be, I might be interested in making this, A, to see if it's any different than Castile soap, and two, maybe doing it in the different concentrations, because like a 60-40 blend of all the olive to the bay laurel, right, yields one thing, and a 70-30 is supposed to yield another, and an 80-20, another. And so I might want to play around with concentrations just to see if it actually does anything different you know, soap wise, performance wise, than what you can get out of a Castile bar. Because primarily that's what it is. It's a Castile bar with something special. So looking at the, but yeah, looking at the different fatty acid profiles for the two, we have a Bay Laurel coming in at the, with the fatty acid profile of about 30% lauric acid, 20% palmitic, 35% oleic, and 15% linoleic. And then olive oil is, of course, about 70% oleic, 20% linoleic, and 10% palmitic. And so it's interesting, really still a lot of oleic acid in all of that, right? So I'm still guessing that it's going to be a very slimy, scant lather that I tend to not like in Castile's. And, but because we are increasing the palmitic a little bit, as well as the linoleic, I don't know, might surprise me. So traditionally, Aleppo soap is known to have a big, beautiful lather that's good for like shaving, produces a nice foam. And so I find that to be worthy of a test. So I don't know, I guess I'll bite the bullet and get some oil to do this and we can do a test day. I suppose, but as far as, you know, whether or not you want to make this and keep this in your line, I don't know. Honestly, that price point is enough to scare me off right away, which is, you know, what's literally scared me off, which is why I've never made it. But, you know, could be the most amazing thing ever created. This recipe has not changed. Like the actual things that are put into an Aleppo soap have not ever changed ever when you're, you know, traditionally making it. So, it, and it's highly revered in lots of places. So it might be worth it. I don't know. I think this one I will try, but that's kind of the down and dirty of the Aleppo soap. And it's a very simple process to make it. I will not be heating my olive oil for three days and doing it that way though, because that sounds like a lot of work. Okay, now on to African black soap. Uh, African black soap originated in Nigeria, and today it is made in uh, West Africa, specifically Ghana. Uh, the women there still make it the traditional manner and export it uh, via fair trade organizations. And that's really cool. It too has been around for a super long time and is revered for its antiseptic properties, its acne properties. It's, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a really amazing, you know, soap. In fact, according to WebMD, WebMD has an article on African black soap and studies have been done on the soap's antibacterial properties. And it's been found that it effectively kills bacteria strains like E. coli and different strains of staph. Like studies have been done. It's a thing, it's a big deal. It's antibacterial, according to WebMD. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, the process for making it is also pretty cool in that sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide 
are not used. Lye is not used. What is used for this is uh, a lot of palm kernel oil and some coconut, some shea, just kind of regional specific, depending on what they can get in the area, but definitely a lot of palm kernel, because uh, palm is a thing, you know, in Africa. And it is then mixed with the ashes of, I don't know, either plantain skins or palm tree leaves or cocoa pods or shea tree bark. All of that is dried any of those things are dried and then burnt and then like filtered and then the oils are mixed in with the with the ashes and so it's the ashes themselves from either plantains or palm or cocoa or shea that actually give you your alkali for this to make this you know this type of soap and they are still doing it the very traditional way, all by hand, all, you know, burning the, drying the leaves and burning the leaves and doing all the things in Ghana, in West Africa to this day. And that's wild to me that there's a soap out there. And I'm sure, I don't know, I've never heard of another soap that can be made without, you know, using a proper, you know, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, something that we would call lye. And we're not calling this lie because it's coming from essentially the, well, it's coming from vegetable materials, really, and super wild. I don't know. It's crazy. And so I think it's very, very cool that they have kept this up and it's become uh, very popular in the West for sure. But as it's become so popular in the West, a lot of people around, you know, here in the United States have taken to start making their own and that's fine i have no problem with people you know living their best life and doing their things but the reason why i've never made it so i can't give you a tutorial is because i don't feel comfy doing it i after especially after going through the deep dives of the different oils and butters that we get out of africa and hearing about you know, the problems that they already have with money being taken from them. And so it's very important to support the fair trade routes and everything and make sure that these primarily female, uh, you know, makers and farmers, women out there doing all of the hard work and everything are adequately paid and not taken advantage of. I, th I feel better just exporting it from a fair trade and having it available for when people ask i don't feel comfortable making it but you know if you want to that's completely fine there's like i said you live your best life and we all make the decisions that we want to make in our life but for me i don't know it just feels like i would be co-opting somebody else's thing that's you know a really cool thing and it i think it's wildly different than you know aleppo soaps or castiles or all the jazz because all of that soap is made pretty much the exact same way that we make all of our soaps and so really it's just swapping out some you know oils and, and changing that up to make a different type of soap or whatnot but with this just the process with like the plantain ashes super wild right that's a that's cool i i i want to support the people who've been doing this for centuries and not try to make it just because it's getting popular here but you know that's just me also i don't even know where to find plantain leaves or cocoa pods or shea tree bark i don't know how to find that i don't even know how to measure that but that's day 308 and there it is all things aleppo soap and african soap and yeah very cool uh, bars of soap. In all honesty, these are uh, these are cool recipes. They're cool soaps, just sort of in general. I have been asked uh, countless times over the many many years I've been doing this to make not so much with the Aleppo, but for sure with the African soaps, if I can make them. And as I said in the video, I don't feel super comfy doing that, and so I would prefer to go ahead and go, you know, with. A supplier from Africa that is making this you know the traditional way so there's that and so I really don't have any you know recipes or information to impart to you for something like that because 
I personally don't feel comfy doing it. That doesn't mean you're wrong if you choose to do it. That's completely fine. I just don't want to feel like I'm co-opting somebody else's thing. So there's that. I hope you guys found this video informative. It's definitely a lot of fun getting back into the groove of FAQs and tests and all of the things. So thank you for joining me for this one. I really do appreciate it today, as always, you know. For the Sudzers, I super duper appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting and asking the questions and having the conversation and the dialogue and the discourse. It's amazing. I love you guys. I am out of here for today, but I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. And I don't think it's a uh, nailed it. I think it's a weird test day. So stay tuned. Bye.